Welcome to another AI video tutorial. Today I will show you how I created Photoshop scripts using ChatGPT without writing a single line of code. Let's talk a little about Photoshop scripts. In Photoshop, if you go to the File menu and select Scripts, you can see that Photoshop already includes a few scripts you can use. For example, there is a Delete All Empty Layers script. I have two empty layers, and when I run that script, it automatically removes them. Scripts help you automate tasks so you can do things faster, instead of doing the same work manually. To open a script saved on your computer, use the Browse button, then open files with the JS or JSX extension. If we go to where Photoshop is installed, in my case Program Files, then Adobe, look for your version of Photoshop, then go to Presets, and finally Scripts. Here you will find the scripts that come with Photoshop, accessed from different menus. The one we used earlier to delete empty layers is here. You can right-click and open it with a text editor like Notepad++ or Simple Notepad. You can see the entire code for how that script is built. I do not know much about coding, so I use ChatGPT to create code and scripts for me. For this video, I managed to get a few working scripts. I can copy those scripts and paste them into the Photoshop Scripts folder so I do not have to browse for the script every time. I will paste them here, then I have to close Photoshop and open it again so it can see them. Then I go back to File and Scripts, and now you can see I have more scripts in the list, the ones I created, so it is much easier to access them. Let me show you how I created them. I used ChatGPT5 for this. You add your prompt, ask for a single file Photoshop JSX script for your version of Photoshop, then describe what the script should do. Start simple, then go more complex. In this case, it is a simple Hello World script. Press the arrow to send the prompt. It will think for a bit depending on how complex the prompt is. After a few seconds, I got a simple script. You can see this JavaScript. I can use the copy button to copy the code. Then I open Notepad and paste the code there. The lines between the asterisks are comments. They are useful to explain what the code does. For example, I can add another asterisk and write more in that comment, like AI to play. All scripts start by targeting Photoshop, then use AppBring to front to make Photoshop the active app. The alert is a pop-up message box inside Photoshop that displays a message. Now go to File. Save as. Very important, set save as type to all files instead of text. Otherwise, it will save as a text file, not code. Give it a name, add a dot, and the JSX extension like the other scripts. Save it, and you should be able to run it. Open Photoshop, go to File, then Scripts, choose Browse, and navigate to where you saved the file. You will see it there. Open it, and you will get the pop-up message exactly as requested. Click OK to close it. If you want to edit the script, open it with Notepad or Notepad++, adjust the text, then go to File and Save. Since it already has the right extension, you can save directly. Go back to Photoshop, browse to the script again, open it, and you will see the updated message. Then I tried something more complex. With more complexity, more problems come, right? I wanted to create a script that generates a calendar for the month and year I select from an interface. On the first try, it gave me something, but the alignment was not what I expected. So I took a screenshot, explained what was wrong, and it understood the issue and generated new code for me. That version was a little better but still had some problems, and as you can see here, it even says, you are right. Because it is a Photoshop script, ChatGPT can write the code, but it cannot run it to see how it actually looks. Giving a screenshot helps it understand better what is going on. At one point, I got an error when I ran the script. That can happen even if you are a programmer, since a single comma in the code can break everything. After fixing that, it started to work, and I only wanted some extra changes to have more control. Let's go back to Photoshop. Since I copied the script into the scripts folder, I don't have to browse for the file anymore. It now appears in the scripts list. Here I have the calendar generator, so I can just click on it to open the script. Now I get this little interface that lets me choose the month. I can pick any month from the list, then set the year. I also made it so you can choose which day of the week to start with. Next, I can pick the color for the text, maybe a dark blue. For Sunday, I wanted a different color, but you can set it to the same if you like. Should I maybe go with an orange color? Once everything is ready, I click the OK button. Then you wait about half a minute while it generates layers for each day of the month. 
It creates a lot of layers, but I set it up so they go into groups, making it easier to work with. And look at that. We have our calendar generated. You can press OK and now save this PSD file, then edit the fonts, colors, or rearrange it. You could do this manually, but adding all the numbers for each day on separate layers would take a while. Everything is organized in groups, so you can hide them to see what each group contains. You can select a layer, like the title, then go to the Type tool, and from the top you can try different fonts and pick one you like. It's really easy to customize. You can also change the colors anytime, even after the calendar is generated. For the background, you can keep it transparent, add an image, or use a different color. I think scripts are quite useful because they save a lot of time. You can move the entire calendar, place it in a new document, or move individual parts. I will share all the scripts and prompts for free on Discord, so check the video description for the links. Sometimes I have PSD files with a lot of layers, and if you keep them organized and accurately named, it is easier to find what you need. So I wanted a script that lets me search for and select layers by name. On the first run I got an error, so I showed a screenshot of it. I just pasted the screenshot without saying anything, letting ChatGPT figure out what was wrong. On the second try, the code worked. Let's go to Photoshop and test it. I added some random layers with different names. I will go to File, Scripts, and select the script called Select Layers by Name. A field appears where I can type what I want. For example, if I search for dot and press OK, it will select the dot layer. If I run the script again and use the asterisk, that means it can be anything before that word, so it does not search for the exact word. If I search for cream, it should select both the cream and ice cream layers. When I click OK, those two layers are selected. Once they are selected, you can group them to organize, delete them, or make other changes. Sometimes I want to know what fonts were used in a PSD without searching all the layers to check each one, so I thought I would make a script that tells me all the fonts I used. On the first try, I got an error. On the second try it worked, but it did not recognize italic fonts. I gave it a screenshot of the font styles, and then it finally worked. Let's go to Photoshop and test it. The script is called List All Fonts in Document. When I run it, it lets me choose whether I want to only show the font names or save them to a text file. Let's try the alert dialog first. I can also choose whether to include duplicates and whether to include the font style. When I run it, I get a message that lists the fonts in the document. Pretty cool, right? Press OK. Now let's run the script again. This time I will use the Save to Text File option, select Include Styles, press Run, browse to where I want to save the file, give it a name, and save. The file is saved and it tells me the location. If we go to that folder and open the file, you can see all the fonts listed there. It is a useful little script. Sometimes you want to send a PSD to someone, but they do not have the fonts. You can convert the text to vector shapes so they can still use the PSD without those fonts. I asked for a script that does exactly that. It searches for all type layers and converts them to vector shapes. At first it had trouble finding the layers, then it had issues with locked layers, so it needed a way to unlock them temporarily, convert to vector, and then restore the lock. The same fix was needed for hidden layers. After that, it worked for the whole document, but not for selected layers only. It took a bit of work to get that right. With a few minutes of waiting between code updates, it took about an hour to get the final script. I can now use this script called Convert All Text to Shapes. By default, it includes the whole document, skips locked layers, and gives the option to include hidden layers as well. If I run it, you can see it converted four text layers, those layers are no longer editable text, they are now vector shapes. I can undo it with a single undo to get everything back as it was. If I want to convert only selected layers instead of the whole document, I can open the script again and choose the option Only Selected Layers. When I click Run, it will convert only those layers. For the next script, I thought it would be simple. It is a script that searches for text and replaces it. Every text editor has that function, but Photoshop does not. To make this work, I ran into all kinds of problems. I started to think maybe that is why Photoshop never added this feature, because it is hard to control. It is not just a single text layer. The script has to search through many layers. There are also different types of text, like horizontal and vertical. Some layers are locked, some are invisible, 
and so on. I kept going back and forth until I reached a compromise and got a version that works. It might still have some bugs, but it is the best I could do, and it took a lot of time to get there. Let me show you how it works. The script is called Find and Replace Text. Since I was not able to fix some problems with locked and hidden layers, I included a note that it does not search for text in those layers. If I search for the word cream and replace it with white, the script shows me which layers it found and asks if I want to proceed. There is still a small bug where it says it is done before it actually finishes, but when I press OK, the change happens. Now the word cream is replaced with white. To undo, I have to undo each layer one by one until I get back to the original words. Let's open the script again. This time I will search for the whole word cream, and for replace I will leave it empty. When I run it, it finds only the word cream, not ice cream, and replaces it with nothing. Let me redo that quickly and now replace the word cream with water. As you can see, it works. Since it kept repeating the same errors, for each script that finally worked, I asked ChatGPT to analyze the whole conversation and tell me what worked and what did not. That way I could give the notes to another ChatGPT so it could learn from those mistakes. It gave me a long list of what it learned in that session. I created a text file where I put all those notes from each script. Then I created a new custom GPT. I gave it those instructions and also the scripts, so they go into the GPT knowledge. If I want a new script, it can search the existing ones to see if it can reuse some code. It is still not perfect because I don't have enough good scripts that do different things, but it does help a little with scripting. This is the custom GPT. I will add the link on Discord. I did not make it public. Only those with the link can access it since it might still have some bugs. Since I created the GPT, I can also edit it. When you create a new GPT, it starts with a basic setup where you add the information. Under Configure, you can also add knowledge files. I think the limit is 20 files. I added the scripts I made and a few from the Photoshop scripts folder. At one point, when I asked for a script, it said it found a way to do something in the Adobe script and use that. So if you want a good GPT, I suggest you find some solid scripts similar to what you want to build and give those to ChatGPT, or create a custom GPT like I did. That way it has a better chance of giving you the script you want. So using this custom GPT, I wanted to create another script that replaces a design in a smart object. This can be useful when you need to test different designs on a mock-up. I have a mock-up prepared of a man with a white t-shirt, but you can use any mock-up. The important part is that it has a smart object where the design will be placed. Inside this smart object, you can add a design. For example, if I just add a simple color, close and save it, that change is applied to the main PSD. I also added some warp distortion to the smart object, so you can adjust perspective and make it look more realistic, like with any mock-up. I duplicated the man with the t-shirt and used multiply and screen with different opacity to add shadows and highlights, so it fits better. Let me revert it back to how it was and show you how the script works. From scripts I select the one called Replace Design in Smart Object. It opens an interface with some options. If I click Run without adding anything, it tells me I am missing the input. The input lets us select a folder with images, and it will load those designs into the Smart Object. I select my Images folder since that is where I save the designs. Even though there is no preview, this step just selects the folder. Next, you set the name of the Smart Object you want replaced. In my case, it is called design. So either name your smart object that way or change it in the script. Then you choose a folder where you want to export the mockups after the designs are applied. I created a folder called export for this. Now I run the workflow, and you can see it opens each image from the input folder, places it inside the smart object, and then saves it to the export folder. It processed four images because I only had four designs in that folder, now I can go to the Images folder, which was the input folder, with the designs I wanted on the t-shirt. I tried different types of illustrations. Then, if I go to the Export folder, I have all those mock-up images with the design on the t-shirt. Of course, you can use this for different workflows. Let's say I want to make a new, simple mock-up. I create a new document, 2000 pixels. I draw a rectangle, 
using shape from the top, and set it to 1024 by 1024 pixels. This area will be where my design goes, and I can position it on a t-shirt, mug, billboard, or anything else. Before transforming it, I name it Design, then right-click and convert it to a smart object. If you transform before making it a smart object, it will not work. Now I can add shadows or all kind of effects, or warp and distort it, but I have another video on the channel special for mockups with ChatGPT and Photoshop. If I duplicate it, the copy will also be replaced since it comes from the original smart object, even if the name is slightly different. Let me save this mockup. Inside the smart object, I create an empty layer and delete the shape, leaving it transparent. I save and close the smart object, then save the mockup again. Now when I run the script, I set the smart object name to Design, choose the input folder with my designs, and set the export folder. Running the script replaces the smart object with the designs. If I check the export folder, I can see the results. Imagine you have 1,000 designs to put on a t-shirt or mug. Doing it manually would take forever. With a script like this, you can set it up for your needs, let it run while you take a break, and come back to find everything done for you. If you have a favorite script that you run often, going to File, then Scripts, and then searching and selecting it might be time-consuming. It would be great to add a shortcut to that, right? Adding a shortcut directly to the script is not possible, but there is a way around it. I will go to the Windows menu and open Actions. Actions are similar to scripts and let you record certain things inside Photoshop, but they do not let you do things that are not in the Photoshop menu. That is why we use scripts to expand Photoshop's capabilities. I am clicking this folder so I can create a folder that will contain my actions. I will name it scripts so I can put only script-related actions here. Then, with that scripts folder selected, I go and click the plus icon to create a new action. I will name it something like show all fonts. You can see it shows which set or folder it belongs to, in this case the one we created earlier. Now I can add a shortcut to this action. If I select F8, I can probably use that, but if that shortcut already exists, it will ask me to replace it. If I combine it with another key, like Shift, it will probably not exist, so Shift plus F8 will run that action once it's ready. If I hit Record, it will start recording what I do in Photoshop. You can see now the icon is red, which means it is recording. What I want to do is record the steps I normally do, like going to Scripts and running the script I want. In this case, I want the List All Fonts script. I click Run and OK. You can see now it shows that a script command has been added here. If I do other things in Photoshop, it will also record those. I click the stop icon to stop the recording. Now we have this action set, with the shortcut next to it. For example, I can select that action and hit play, and you can see it runs my script really fast. The shortcut also works. If I press it now, the script runs. You can repeat the same steps for other scripts you use, creating different actions for each one so they are easier to access. Even without shortcuts, it might be easier to select from the list and play the action. With an action selected, you have different options. You can go to Action Options and change the name or the shortcut. If you messed something up, you can just delete the action and record a new one. If you select the folder, you can save the actions as a file so you can use them on another computer or import them later if something happens to your current actions. You can also set them to button mode. I have a lot of them, so it is easier to see when they are not in button mode. But if you only have a few, it might be faster to use button mode. You can even change the colors and make them look nice. That is all for today. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. And if you found something useful, please like and leave a comment to help with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you, AI Titans, and everyone who subscribed to the YouTube membership and supports the channel so I can make more tutorials. Don't forget to check the links in the video description on how to access the free prompts and Photoshop scripts.